What's up guys? Welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey. And if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, let's jump into our review. Today we're looking at the Bladnik 11. Stick around. All right, so we've got a fun one today. We're looking at a Bladnuck, and this is actually the first Bladnuck I've ever reviewed on the channel, and it's the first bottle of Bladnuck I've ever owned. Uh, this one is the 11-year-old. What I've got here is the 2021 release. Now, this is an annual release. They now have a 2022 available, uh, and it is entirely bourbon cask matured. This one's a follow-up to their 10-year-old release, which was a huge hit, and I've heard so many amazing things about it, but unfortunately, I never got a chance to try it. I did get really close to getting a bottle. I found one at an airport in Korea and I brought it up to the cash and the girl rang it through and then it turned out that she couldn't sell it to me. And she didn't speak any English, so she couldn't explain why she couldn't sell it to me. But yeah, it was kind of awkward. Hi, I'd like to buy this. Okay. No. No? No. Why? No. So I was kind of bummed about that. It was one I really wanted to try, but you know, it's a limited release. It's from a few years back. I think that one came out in like 2019 or so, uh, and it was a smash hit. So it is what it is. Luckily, I did come across this bottle here a few months later at a particularly miserable retail chain here in Taiwan that overcharges for basically everything. So I paid a good chunk more than what the international standard price for it is, but I got it. And here's the thing, I'm actually not a big Lowlands fan, but it seems like these days there's a bit of a change happening there. We have stuff like Bladnuck, we have stuff like uh, Daft Mill, which I've yet to try. And a lot of these newer distilleries that are popping up in the Lowlands, they might finally be doing the region justice. Because as it turns out, Lowland whiskeys don't need to be characterless and gentle and simple and easy. They can be as complex or challenging or as interesting as whiskeys from anywhere else. And we have brands like Bladnuck here that are starting to make that known. So let's not waste time. Let's jump into a review of this stuff. And in the meantime, if you could kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. Okay, so we've got a respectable 46.7% ABV. It's non-chill filtered and our color is natural. All right, so we've got a beautiful natural color there. As for the bottle, um, <laughs> listen, when you put out a bottle like this, you're gonna divide opinion, it's inevitable. But you guys know me, I like my modern or my stylized bottles, so this one's right up my alley. Uh, and I will admit, like, it's not a comfortable hold or a comfortable pour, but it looks cool. So presentation is five out of five. Fight me. It does say non-chill filtered natural color here. It says it's matured in bourbon casks. We have some basic tasting notes down here. Uh, mine is the 2021 release. As I said, they have put out a 2022. Uh, it's very stylized. It's very distinctive. It won't be for everyone. I like it. I didn't add water. Let's try our nose. Okay, so this is really unique right out the gate. It's herbal. I get like all sorts candy here. Honeysuckle, florals, orange blossom. There's some beeswax in here. There's lemon rind, apricots, dried mango, and some oak. This is floral, it's crisp, and it's complex. Let's try our palette. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. Very soft, mellow arrival here. And it's oily. I'm getting like orange oils, lemon oils, very citrusy. Um, orange blossom again. Lemon hard candy. Lemon verbena. It's very herbal, like an herb garden vibe here. There's some earthiness. And there's also a fruity, rancid note in here, like fruits rotting in a compost pile which sounds terrible, it's actually delicious. Uh, I'm getting stuff like mangoes, papaya, star fruit, citrus rinds, even some twigs in there. Uh, so yeah, fruit rotting in a compost pile. And now our finish.
Mm. All right. Return of the compost pile, uh, which is a delicious tasting note. Terrible Star Wars movie. Those compost notes are kind of the same. We have stuff like mango and papaya and starfruit, uh, citrus rinds, twigs, and they're all kind of like rotting or fermenting under the sun. It's really interesting. Uh, we also have a bit of a foresty vibe here. I mean, it's stuff like uh, spruce or pine notes. We have a strong, slightly bitter, slightly vegetal herbal element in here. Our finish is medium to long, lingering on more of those rancid fruit notes. So if you couldn't tell from the tasting notes, this stuff is atypical. Um, it is not a Glenfiddich or a Glenmorangie or an Auchentoshan or anything familiar. Um, it's super interesting stuff, but it's definitely very offbeat. It's definitely very distinctive, unique. But is it any good? Obviously, that is going to depend on your taste, but most of the time, us whiskey nerds do like our very characterful whiskeys. I'm certainly one of those people, and my thoughts on this one are, I think this is one of the most interesting and delicious whiskeys that I've tasted in a really long time. Now, I can't speak for all the new Bladnik releases. I've only had a full bottle of this one. The rest have been samples. They've been fantastic, but I don't think I've ever had a single malt that tastes like this stuff. It's got a set of flavors that really set it apart. And while a lot of those flavors sound really weird and even off-putting in the tasting notes, it works. Not only does it work, it's fantastic. It's a very Moorish whiskey. It's not dark or brooding or heavy. In fact, it's very bright and clean and crisp, but it's still very hefty, very characterful, very vivid. Uh, this will blow away any misconceptions that you might have about Lowland whiskeys being like boring or bland or generic. This stuff is interesting. Another thing of note about this whiskey is that it really holds up in a session. And that's not something a lot of people touch on. That's not something a lot of reviewers touch on. I don't think I've ever touched on it myself. But oftentimes when you're tasting a whiskey as part of a lineup or, you know, in a session in a group, um, some whiskeys get washed out, some overwhelm others. And even though it might taste great independently, it's a different animal when you're tasting them together. You might be drinking peated stuff. You might be drinking some cast strength stuff. Certainly, if you're having a session with me, I'll have plenty of both on hand, and that's it. A lot of whiskeys that are just fantastic on their own won't taste very good, or at least they'll taste very different, but not this one. Despite being a whiskey that I would say is on the crisp, brighter side of things, this one absolutely holds up in a session. In fact, not only does it hold up, oftentimes it ends up being the favorite of the night or among the favorites of the night. Not just mine, but my friends too. I've showed this to a bunch of people. All of them have been impressed. Um, this has done nothing but deliver since the day I popped it. It is fresh. It's a little bit spirity. As I said, it's bright and crisp and clean and vivid. Uh, really interesting flavors in here. I talked about how we have these foresty notes, these herbal notes, vegetal notes, rotting compost, fermented fruits. It's not a normal whiskey, guys. And thing is, it's not a weirdo whiskey either. It's not like a weird novelty look at me whiskey. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm having a tough time describing it, but trust me, it's delicious. So obviously I'm a huge fan of this stuff. My score is going to be no less than 92. Uh, this is one of the most interesting and delightful whiskeys that I've had in a while. And you know, for an 11 year old, it's just brilliant. Like Bladnock really works as a youngish whiskey. Like I said, I never actually got a chance to try the 10 year old. I really wanted to, but I couldn't get my hands on it. Most opinions online say that the 10 is better than the 11. But I gotta say, if this is the downgrade, damn. Damn. Just wow. Well done. So this one is for the whiskey explorers. If you like seeking out new flavors or trying something unique and distinctive, um, listen guys, I've been drinking for a long time. Sounds healthy. Uh, and I rarely get surprised. This one took me. I'm thoroughly impressed, and I can't recommend it enough. As I mentioned earlier, I paid more than the standard international price for this one, and obviously I would prefer to have not done that, but I'm still okay with it just because I like the whiskey that much. I think if you're in other markets like the UK, I think this is available in the States, uh, then this is crazy value for money. 
And I don't know if the 2021 release is still around, but if you can find the 2022, get it. I've had this in sessions where I beat out whiskeys triple its price, and even though I did overpay here in Taiwan, especially considering its age, this whiskey has delivered for me with every sip. Definitely worth the money. All right, that's it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to help support the channel, please consider becoming a patron. Otherwise, you can like, comment, and subscribe. That is always appreciated. This one, I really do want to hear from you guys. Have you tried it yet? Have you had the 10-year-old? How did the 10 and the 11 compare? What are your thoughts? Finally, down below in the comments, let me know what you want to see me review next. I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.